Write the equation of the tangent line to the curve f of x equals x cubed minus 3x at the point 1 comma negative 2. And we'll start by using our formula, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h. So remember that when we're looking at our point, the a value is the x value. So we're looking basically at the point where a is equal to 1. And then my y value here, this is essentially f of a. So in this case, this is f of 1. We see that f of 1 is equal to the output of negative 2. And that's important for starting the setup here. So the slope of our tangent will be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 1, and we're going to substitute 1 in here for a, so f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all divided by h. So that's our setup, allowing a to equal 1. So now we need to actually do the function notation part. So this is where your algebra skills really come in handy because we need to figure out the value of f of 1 plus h. So remember what that means is we are going to substitute 1 plus h into our function everywhere that we see an x. So that's going to be Instead of x cubed, 1 plus h, the quantity cubed, minus 3 times 1 plus h. So that's f of 1 plus h. And then we are going to subtract. We have minus. The next part of this difference quotient is f of 1. So f of 1 means we could plug 1 into our function. But f of 1 is actually already done for us here. We know the output. We know the y value. When x equals 1, the output is negative 2. So you really don't need to do that work if that y value is given to you. So we would subtract negative 2. And then this is all divided by h. Let's keep going. The limit as h approaches 0. Now, this first portion here, 1 plus h cubed, we will actually need to do some of that algebra and multiply that out. So I'm going to come off to the side, and this would be a good thing to do on some scratch paper because we just need to really work through the 1 plus h times 1 plus h times 1 plus h. Now, if you happen to know or remember Pascal's triangle, that would be really cool. You could implement that here. But if you don't remember that, that's going to be a discussion for a different day. So 1 plus h times 1 plus h will be 1 plus 2h plus h squared. Then we've got to multiply that quantity by 1 plus h. Just be really careful so you're not making any silly mistakes. You're just distributing, you know, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times h is h. And continue distributing 2h times 1 is 2h, 2h times h is 2h squared, and I'm running out of colors. <laughs> h squared times 1 is h squared, and h squared times h is h cubed. So then let's combine like terms. I'm also going to reorder everything so that we have the highest exponent first. So it looks like we have h cubed. 2h squared plus 1h squared is 3h squared. h plus 2h is 3h plus 1. All right, so there's my algebra that I have done off to the side. So this is going to go here in the numerator, h cubed plus 3h squared plus 3h plus 1. That was from multiplying 1 plus h, the quantity cubed. Then let's go ahead and distribute this negative 3. So we have negative 3 minus 3h. And then this subtraction of the negative 2 turns into a positive 2. Now let's combine like terms and see if anything subtracts out. And hopefully you can see we have a positive 3h, which we'll subtract out with this negative 3h. We also have 
1 minus 3, which is negative 2, which we'll subtract out with this positive 2. So we are left with the limit as h approaches 0 of h cubed plus 3h squared, all divided by h. And then this numerator here, we have a greatest common factor. There's a common factor here of an h squared. Now, you could, you could factor out the h squared, but truthfully, what we're really interested in dividing out is just this h in the denominator. So I'm actually not going to pull out the greatest common factor. I'm just going to factor out an h, since that's all that I'm really interested in dividing out from the denominator. So factor out an h from the numerator, and you'd be left with h squared plus 3h, all divided by h. Now our h's will divide out. And what we're left with here is a nice polynomial, and we can just do direct substitution to evaluate this limit. So if we substitute 0, we will end up with an output of 0. So what we have just found is that the slope of the tangent line at the point 1, negative 2 is 0. Now what does that mean? We're going to explore that next on our graphing calculator. So I need you to think about what's a line going to look like if the slope is 0. Now let's use our graphing calculators to verify our answer. So first we'll graph our curve, which was y equals x cubed minus 3x. Remember, anytime you graph a function on your calculator, always choose zoom number 6, which is zoom standard. Hopefully you see a nice cubic function, no surprise by the shape of this curve kind of being an s. Now, when we did the work by hand, we found that the slope of the tangent at the point 1, comma, negative 2 was 0. So we can kind of visualize here. Here's the point 1, negative 2. That's a local minimum. So sure enough, if I were to draw a tangent line there, I think that the tangent line would be horizontal, which would have a slope of 0. But we can actually draw that tangent line using the graphing calculator and verify this. So your draw menu is right here above the program key. So you're going to choose second program. And then number five says tangent. So choose number five. Now it does not look like the calculator is prompting you to enter anything here, but you can actually type in the X value where you want the tangent line drawn. So we want that to be drawn at the point one comma negative two. So just type in X equals one and press enter. And it not only draws that tangent line in there, which verifies that yes, the tangent line was horizontal, which makes sense because the slope of a horizontal line is zero, and that's what we got for the slope of our tangent line. But it also tells you the equation for the tangent line here in slope intercept form. Now remember, this is just an estimate. It's the best that the calculator can do. So this is y equals mx plus b, and so you can see the slope here, they have written as 1e negative 6, and that's the scientific notation format that the calculator uses. So this is really 1 times 10 to the negative 6th power, which would be a decimal very, very close to 0. We know the actual slope is 0. Therefore, the equation for this horizontal line would just be y equals negative 2. This draw feature is just kind of nice because it helps you visualize what the tangent line will look like at different points. Let me just show you one more time. Second, draw, choose number five, and then you can type in any x value you want for the tangent line to be drawn at that x value. So if I wanna choose, let's say x equals two, just to choose a different value, then press enter, it's gonna draw another tangent line for you, you can see this tangent line has a positive slope and it gives you the approximate equation for that tangent line here in the window as well. Now let's write the equation of the tangent line, but find the slope using our second way of doing so. So the slope of the tangent is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all divided by x minus a. So again, the x value of your point is your a value. So a is equal to 1. 
So let's start by substituting that in. Our slope of our tangent will be the limit as x approaches 1, because we're substituting 1 in for a, of f of x minus f of 1 here, all divided by x minus 1. So you can see I've substituted 1 in for all of the a's. Now let's keep going. I cannot do direct substitution here for this limit because I will end up with division by 0. So we're going to end up having to do a little bit of algebra here. So let's start by determining what is f of x. Well, f of x is just the function that we were given, the equation for our function. So that's going to be x cubed minus 3x. Then we're going to subtract, and we want to subtract f of 1. So f of 1, that's just the y value when we substitute 1 into our function, which we actually already have that y value here. The y value is negative 2. So we're going to subtract negative 2 and then divide that all by x minus 1. So we have the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 3x plus 2 all divided by x minus 1. And again, direct substitution doesn't work. So we have to go back to our tool belt and figure out what are all the algebraic tools we have and which one would work in this instance. So ultimately, we would really like to be able to divide out this x minus 1 in the denominator, which means if we could factor the numerator and if x minus 1 was a factor, that would be great because then we could divide out the x minus 1. So we need to go back to our division techniques. A little bit of a review of some algebra here. So we could divide x minus 1 into x cubed minus 3x plus 2 and do that with long division and see if it divides in evenly. Or remember the alternative to long division is synthetic division which most of you prefer, I know. So if we're dividing by x minus 1, then remember if we were to find the 0 of that, so x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1, then we would put 1 in our box for synthetic division, and then we would list the coefficients. And if we look at our coefficients here, we have a 1x cubed, then we have a negative 3 in front of the x as the coefficient, and then we have our constant, which is 2. So when you list your coefficients, you have to be careful for this particular example because we are missing a term right here. We're missing an x squared term. So it's really important in synthetic division that you remember to include the 0 for the x squared term. And then we have negative 3 as our next coefficient, and then 2 is our constant. So this is our setup for synthetic division. If for some reason you have gotten to this point and never seen synthetic division, then that's definitely something for you to look up or reach out to me, and I can help you with that if this one example is not enough. So hopefully it's just a refresher for you. We're going to drop down the 1, then multiply by the number that's here in the box. 1 times 1 is 1, and then we add straight down. 0 plus 1 is 1. Then we multiply again by the number in the box. That's 1 times 1. And then we add straight down, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Multiply by the number in the box, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and add straight down, which gives us a 0. Now, remember that this value here is our remainder, and a remainder of 0 means that x minus 1 divided evenly into x cubed minus 3x plus 2. And the values that I have here, 1, 1, and negative 2, these are the coefficients of my result, my answer. So because I was dividing an x into an x cubed, I'm going to end up with an x squared. So this is essentially 1x squared plus 1x minus 2, but we know we typically don't write those 1s, so that's just x squared plus x minus 2. So we have essentially used synthetic division to help us factor. We're kind of using it as a, an advanced factoring technique. So the numerator 
which was x cubed minus 3x plus 2, we have now factored it, and we found that x minus 1 divided into it evenly, so x minus 1 is a factor, and the other factor is x squared plus x minus 2. So that's pretty slick if you realize that you can use long division or synthetic division. And in this case now, these x minus 1s divide out, which is beautiful. So we're left with the limit as x approaches 1 of the quantity x squared plus x minus 2. And now we can do direct substitution, substituting in a 1 for all of our x's. So 1 squared plus 1 minus 2, and that gives us an answer of 0. Now let's remember what this means. 0 is the slope of our tangent line. Now we're not done. We confirmed that we got a slope of zero. That's what we got the last time in part A, so that's great. You can kind of compare these methods and decide which one you prefer. I find that the previous method, the limit as h approaches zero, it is a little bit longer. It requires a little bit more algebra generally. However, this process, the limit as x approaches a, even though it's a little shorter, it does require sometimes that advanced algebra skill of this division using synthetic division. But if you understand that, it's a pretty slick way of finding the slope of the tangent line. But we're not done because the problem asked us to write the equation for the tangent line. We're not just finding the slope, we actually need to finish this and write the equation. So remember, if the slope of the tangent line is zero, then that means that the tangent line is horizontal. So this is telling us that we have a horizontal tangent line. So we are asked to write the equation for the tangent line and it's horizontal. So a little sketch here. Our point was one negative two. That's the point where we were writing the equation for the tangent line. And we have found that the tangent line is horizontal, so we need to write the equation for this horizontal line. So be sure that you actually finish the problem. The answer is not zero, but rather the equation for the tangent line, because it's horizontal, will be y equals negative two. And if you didn't finish that on part A, will you please go back and make sure that you have it finished? so that you're not just stopping at zero, because zero is not the answer, but the equation for the tangent line is the horizontal line, y equals negative two.